don't forget, the 6.30 service is the best service to be in because eventually as, as we keep the service, it's gonna grow over time. And the reason why we're doing this service is because we don't have enough at five o'clock that we need to spread out to go to 6.30. So you, come on, say stay at this service. You stay at 6.30, look at the person next to you and say, this is the best one. This is the best one, you guys have the, uh, anyway. So uh, we're gonna do some, we're, 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 we're going through the book of Romans, but I'm gonna start with a question tonight. And I just, it's just, a, if you are uh, uh, not sure what you think about faith, or you're kind of kicking the tires of faith, this question really isn't for you. I just want you to know I'm really glad you're in church. I'm glad you showed up and you're kind of like, like figuring out what you think about faith in Jesus and all that. So I'm just glad you're here. So you're just, but if, you, if you're a person who's like, man, you're in church every week and, you, and you're trying to seek Jesus and worship Jesus, I have a question for that group tonight. How many of you feel like that there is, like you ju you're just a little bit more alone in the world following Jesus than it used to be? Like, you know, like you feel like maybe I'm like the only Christian at work or like the only Christian at school or I don't really just know very many people. Like, I just feel like I'm doing this a lot by my, who, who kind of feels that way? Can I see your hands? Okay, that, that, I, I get that because that is how so many people feel and the truth of the matter is the text we're going to look at in a second, the scripture we're going to look at, this is how Elijah feels about the world and about life. I think that uh, in our world today, people feel much less prone to faith than they used to. And we're much more like, I'm the only Christian at work or the only Christian at school or everybody else is out partying. And I'm like, I'm the sober driver and everybody else is this way. And I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to be rude to people and tell them they have to do what they want, but like, or do, do our thing. But like, I just really feel like I'm kind of alone at the Christian thing. And then the, 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 the devil kind of whispers in your ear, like, like, yeah, you know what? You are alone. You are by yourself. Everybody else has given up on faith. In fact, I found a study this week just to kind of reinforce a little bit of that idea. Uh, so, uh, when COVID hit, when COVID started, there were 90 million evangelical Christians in America. There's 300 million people in America. 90 million of them were Bible-believing Christians. At the end of COVID, 30 million Christians had bailed on church. We lost one third of the local church in America in two and a half years. It is the largest drop in church attendance in, in all of church history in America. Like by far, it is, uh, it's like a great purging of the American church that took place in literally two and a half years. We lost 30 million people and we only had 90 million to start with. There's only 60 million believers regularly going to church. Like, so there's a little bit of it like, man, I do kind of feel like I'm, I'm the only one at this. I feel like I'm a little alone at this. And it's like, it's, sometimes it's a little stressful. If that's how you feel, and once again, if, if you kind of sometimes feel like you're kind of alone at faith in different situations, can you put your hand up again? Put your hand up, just like, yeah, you're like, I'm kind of isolated. Okay, then you're gonna like this talk a lot because we're talking about the theology of the remnant. Everybody say remnant. Remnant, uh, the, the last of the, uh, of, the, of the faithful few, the last. This is, how the, 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 this is how the apostle Paul writes it in Romans chapter 11, the text we're gonna look at. This is his text. He says this. Elijah the prophet complained, so Elijah this prophet from God, complained to God about the people of Israel. And he's like, Lord, they've killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left. Nobody else at work is a believer. Everybody else smokes weed. I'm not smoking weed. Everybody else is getting hammered. I'm, I'm not hammered. Everybody else is like dropping the F-bombs all the time. And I'm just trying, I'm trying to honor you. I'm the only one. Nobody else is following you. I'm like the only guy who even cares. So if you've felt that way before, and in our culture, it feels like it's becoming more and more the norm. If you feel that, the prophet Elijah felt that as well. He writes, and he says this, Lord, they've killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. At least they aren't coming to kill you yet. So you got some good things. There you go. Uh, you're, I'm not dead yet. Okay. <laughs> and do you remember God's reply? He said, no, I have 7,000 others who have never bowed down to Baal. It is the same today. For a few, everybody say a few. few. Come on, say a few. few. A few of the people of Israel have remained, what's the next word? Faithful. What's the word? Faithful. A few have remained faithful because of God's Grace, basically this. I, I want you to understand that a remnant is a group of people who, who choose to believe when everybody else kind of falls away or walks away. And scripture says the closer we get to the end, the more that people will walk away from faith 
and there'll be less and less believers. In fact, Romans 11 verse 5 in the New King James translates like this, at the present time there is a, what's the word? Remnant. Remnant. And that, that, that this theological concept is true for every generation of the world. Since God created Adam and Eve, God has always drawn a remnant out of the crowd. And basically you could choose, I wanna be a part of the crowd, I wanna go with what everybody else does, I wanna go live how everybody else lives, or you could be a part of the cross. But if you choose the cross, if you choose Christ, you're gonna be a, a little weird. You're gonna be on the, on the outs a little bit. You're gonna be, the, the, you're, you're, you're not gonna be the cool kid. You're not gonna be the kid that, ever, like, because the very nature of being a person of faith other people are naturally just going to mock it. So here's my definition of remnant so that you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So uh, in every generation, throughout all of history, when most turn away, and like I just talked about the fact that we've lost 30 million believers in the last two and a half years, largest drop in church history in America. Uh, when most turn away and judgment is coming, and truthfully, if the nation of the U.S. does not turn back to Christ and back to its roots, this nation is, is over. It, it, will, it, will, it will be ruined and destroyed. It's not gonna last like this forever. God's patience will eventually be like, all right, time's up. And, and, and it's, it's, there's gonna be a moment where judgment comes. That's where we're at. There always remains, come on, say always remains, a small group of faithful people. God doesn't need a crowd to change the world. He, in fact, rejected the crowd and Jesus chose 12 disciples. He wasn't like, oh no, what will I do? I, I need an entire stadium of believers. He doesn't need a stadium. He just needed 12. 12 people altered human history. The whole planet, the world, every civilization on earth has been affected by those. He didn't need a, he didn't need a crowd. He just needed 12. I always think it's funny. Um, uh, when you fill up this room, which some of the services are full, people will go, oh, wow, I can feel the spirit. And then when the crowd is light, people are like, well, it was kind of, it was kind of slow. And that's because um, you understand the emotions of a crowd. That's called a rock concert. There's nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit doesn't need a room full of people for you to feel it. Jesus chose 12. He chose 12 disciples. He chose a few people in order to change, and he could have picked a ton. He also could have picked rich people. He didn't. He didn't choose the most educated. He didn't choose the most wealthy. He didn't choose the most influential. He didn't choose the Instagram. Oh, I gotta get the Instagram star because if I get the most influencers on my team, we can make a difference. He's like, no, nah, I just need 12 ordinary fishermen. That'll work. Jesus pulls 12, which means something really important. Um, if you actually believed that Jesus could use the few and the remnant. You literally, the half, half of this crowd, a third of this crowd could change all of Elk River. Because God doesn't need a crowd. He just needs people to say, I'm in, I'll be a part of the, come on, say faithful few. Like he, he just needs a few to say, I'll be in this. And this is all throughout the whole Bible that he goes, I don't need the crowd. I just need a few. I'll give you some verses. This is Isaiah chapter one, verse nine. It says, unless the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, a very few, we would have become like Sodom. We would have become like Gomorrah. What did God do to Sodom and Gomorrah? He destroyed it by fire. He says, unless God had found a faithful few, all of Israel would have been destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. Next verse, Isaiah 37, verse four. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Pray for those who are gonna stay faithful when everybody else sometimes kind of goes away or falls away. Isaiah 37, 31. The remnant who have escaped from the house of Judah for out of Jerusalem shall go a what? He's gonna send a few. He wasn't sending everybody. Send in a few. You just have to decide whether you're going to be a part of the faithful few or you're going to stick with the crowd. Now, uh, this is Isaiah, this is Romans chapter 9, verse 27. It says, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the seashore, like there's lots of people in the nation of Israel, the remnant will be saved. Sometimes people get the, the impression that God needs. Everybody, no, he loves everybody. 
and he died for everybody, but he's just looking for the faithful few. He's just looking for those that will actually, this is Romans or Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 and 13. This is Jesus talking now, and he's, he's talking, by the way, to the 12 disciples, so he's talking only to the remnant. And he says this, because of the increase of wickedness, and that's the direction of our world, if you look at uh, where our nation is at, we are most definitely in a closer place of wickedness and ruin than we have ever been in the history of this country, because of the, and, and honestly the world itself, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most, the crowd, the majority, will grow cold, but the one, come on, say the one. The one who stands firm to the end will be saved. In other words, it doesn't make a difference what the person down the road does. It doesn't make a difference what your spouse does because you don't give account for your spouse. You only give account for you. You stand before Jesus, just you and God, and you give account for your life. And were you, hey, I just, I went, I kind of went with the crowd. You know, I'm just like, I know it was, I just, I just couldn't, it was so, so much easier to just, you know, blend in and try to, try to be cool and fit in and, and you're gonna to have to make a choice. Basically, the whole of scripture is, will you choose the crowd or will you choose Christ? Will you choose the applause of men or I don't wanna be ridiculed, I don't wanna be the weird kid, I don't wanna be the, or will you say, no, I, I, I would rather have the applause of Jesus than I would the applause of men. And you're gonna to have to, to make that choice. Now, I told you this is all throughout the Bible. I'm gonna give you several biblical examples of this. First one I give you is Noah. So uh, the story of Noah, basically he and his family are the only faithful ones left on the planet and are rescued from coming judgment. This is Genesis chapter six through nine. He's the, he's the only dude. Like he, like, he's like, I, I'm gonna stay, I don't care. Like, I, I gotta follow Christ. It doesn't matter, make a difference what you think. Like, if you don't wanna follow God, you don't have to, but I got, and God only, God only rescues only rescues Noah and his family. Everyone else, every, oh, there's not really gonna be a flood. It's not really gonna happen. There's not really gonna be judgment. It's not, I don't really have to give account for my life. Let's just party. It doesn't really, all the cool kids are fools. How about, how about the story of Lot? So Lot lives uh, in a town called Sodom and Gomorrah. He and his family are the only faithful ones left. And so God sends two angels into the town to specifically rescue Lot and his wife and two daughters, and he pulls them free, and then the city is destroyed. They are the, come on, say remnant. They're the, they're the, faith, they're the faithful few. Uh, Elijah, uh, this is the text we just read. Uh, in the Romans text we just read, Elijah's like, nobody else believes anymore. And God's like, no, no, there, there's 7,000 among Israel that have stayed faithful. In other words, even though you don't feel like there's anybody left, there's a few. Among the millions, there's a few that I have called out. They have stayed faithful when everybody else wimped out, stayed the part. From the beginning of, like, this is like the beginning of the Bible. Noah's the story at the beginning of the Bible. All the way through the end, it is about, it is, come on, say the remnant. It is always about which group are you in? The faithful few or the crowd? In fact, this is Jesus talking in Matthew 7, and he says this. He says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many, the crowd love it. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few. Everybody doesn't make it. The crowd, are, they are fools. It is foolishness. You do have to choose. It is the broad road or the narrow road and you can only, like literally it's, it's which, which road are you on? Because you can't, you can't have a foot in, in both worlds. It doesn't, you, 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 you gotta choose. James 4.4, 4. James says it like this. The apostle James says, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? Wait, what? He's saying, hey, bro, don't you know this is war? There's two sides. And the evidence to which side you're on is whether you wimp out with the crowd or not. Because you're just really a part of the crowd. You're either walking with Jesus or you're 
something else. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I, I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, and you can, if that's how you want to live, if that's what you want to do, if that's how you want to act, you, you can do it. But the problem is, is you make yourself an enemy of God. It is the crowd, or it is the cross. It is I got to fit in and be cool, or I got to honor Christ. No, I didn't say be weird for weird's sake. <laughs> Some people just weird on their own. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying you, you, you don't need to be a weirdo for Jesus. You just need to be like, I, I'm a person, I, if, if, if you're going to smoke weed, that's your deal. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to honor Jesus with my body. Uh, if you want to live that way sexually or whatever, I, that's, that's your deal. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to push anything on you. Like, but for me, I, I got to honor God in this way. It, for, you, you might want to talk that way. I, can't, I, can't, I just can't talk that way because I'm just trying to honor, honor God with my words. And it's not about trying to tell other people what to do. It's about what. Where do you stand? Where have you landed? Is it you walk with the world or you walk with the Lord? It is one or it is the other. The Bible says there's only a faithful few. Romans 12 too. He says this, this is, by the way, we're going to get to Romans 12 on fall kickoff weekend just in a couple weeks, but I couldn't help but bring the verse up because it's so good. It says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. In other words, the world around you is trying to constantly beat you like clay into a mold like everybody else. We all drink, we all use, we all mess up our lives. I feel broken, you should too. And you got to be honest, if, if, if you don't have anything to believe in, if you don't have no higher power to trust, if you don't have like a hope or a reason for the world, there's no reason to be here. So we might as well just, you know, waste our lives and get high and do what we do. And, oh, you don't want to do that? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to like adjust you and force you to, f and they come after you to, f to make you fit into their paradigm. Don't let the world around you squeeze you. This is Exodus 23, verse 3. Do not follow the crowd in doing what is wrong. Broken people are loved by God. But if they have no higher purpose, they will make up their own, and it will be foolishness. And if you listen, they will break you too. Come on, say the remnant. There's a crowd and there's the cross. There's, and I, I think it's interesting when you think about the cross for a second because there was this giant crowd that was crucifying Jesus. And he is alone against the crowd. And then there's a remnant at the foot of the cross. There's the apostle John and two women named Mary, one of which is his mother. And that's all. Even the other disciples ran with the crowd that day. Remnant, crowd, faithful few, or go with the flow. This is, this, this is the choice that you personally have to make. And it, it doesn't make a difference. Like I said, what your spouse does or what your friends do or the person down the road does or, 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 or what the nation as a whole does. All God's looking at as look, like Noah was all that was left. And he was still just looking at Noah. What are you going to do? Go with everybody else or, or not? Remember, it's it kind of, a little bit this sounds like, remember when you were a kid and you wanted to do something fun and your mom was like, if everybody jumps off the bridge, you want to jump off a bridge too? <laughs> everybody ever, you ever get told that? Like, okay, so that's like, yes. So, so there's a little bit of that in this. Like, I, I kind of hear my mom in the background shouting at me about things that I shouldn't do. But here's the thing. I was like, I really want to. And, and then I would go and do. And what happens is, if you do jump off the bridge, and most of us eventually do at some point with our lives, then we're left with the brokenness and the pain and the regret and the shame and the guilt. 
And we don't know what to do with all our brokenness and shame and guilt. We wish we hadn't jumped off the bridge, but we did. So now the only thing we can think of is just get other people to jump too so we'll all feel miserable together. <laughs> so then we all get hammered together or we all get high together or we all used together or we all... Because everybody's broken and we're all messed up and so we're trying to... Co it's a coping mechanism now to not feel so bad about the fact that we're all so broken. And so Jesus is like, whatever you do, faithful few. Now, I'm going to wrap up this sermon with two verses, two sections of Scripture, in which Jesus talks about it specifically, and he's only talking to the 12 he chose, his disciples. He's not, he didn't give this message to the crowd at all because they knew they wouldn't pay attention to it. He only gives this message just to the 12, they've said, I'm, I'm going to be a part of the remnant of the faithful few. And I, I'm going to read it to you, and I, I want you to see how he talks about this remnant thing a little bit longer. He says this, Matthew 24, 36. But of the day and the hour, no one knows. What's he talking about? He's talking about his return. Another moment, in other words, there's going to be a moment when Jesus splits the sky and he comes back to earth. He promised, I will leave from the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. He left from that spot. He's going to return to that spot. He's going to walk into Jerusalem, and he's going to rule on reign on earth for a thousand years. Oh, that's dumb. There's no way he's going to do that. Well, he's just being nice and hasn't showed up yet because he loves you. But the moment he shows up, he's going to be like, you're on one team or the other. You don't get to switch. Let, not, it's that, this is the, he just shows, there you are, remnant, faithful few, or crowd. So that's what he's talking about. He says, no one knows the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, but my father only knows when I'm, when I'm coming back. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the son of man. Well, what was, we already went over the Noah thing. What was it like? Ah, oh, there's never going to be a flood. It's not really going to happen. It's not really going to be a big deal. And so now you only got Noah left. Remnant. But as in the days of Noah, so what, back up. I wasn't finished reading that yet. as it was in the days of the flood. So, uh, but as in the days of Noah, what were also with the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So will it be the coming of the Son of Man. Oh, you mean this is really real? Yeah, it's really real. And let's say he doesn't come in your lifetime. Well, you're still gonna give account because you're gonna die. And you're either in the crowd or you're in the remnant. You either went with the flow or you follow Christ. It's, there's, he's just, there's, not, there's not a middle ground here. Then he says this. Then two men will be in the field. This is talking about his return. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other one left. Remnant. When I, when I return, one's coming with me, one's not. Let's pick a one. Two, will be, two women will be grinding at the mill, working basically at, at Krispy Kreme, and they got me donuts. <laughs> two women grinding at the mill. One taken, the other one left. Remnant. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming, but know this, that the master of the house, if he had known what hour the thief had come, he would have watched and not allowed the house to be broken into. He's like, come on, pay attention. You only get one life and I'm gonna show up at any minute and you will give account. You're either in the crowd or you follow Christ. One rescued the other. Oh, Lo, Noah, Lot, Elijah, the remnant got rescued. Then he goes on and says this. Let me see if I can help you understand what, I'm try what he's trying to say. And he explains it this way. Therefore, be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Then the kingdom of heaven was likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And I'll stop you for a second and talk to you about weddings for a second. So at the time of Jesus, a wedding would be unannounced and a surprise to the, to the, to the bride. So rather than picking a date on the calendar, the groom would suddenly out of nowhere show up at her house and say, today's the day, we're getting married. And she had to be ready and she had to have all of her bridesmaids ready. They're just always ready, always waiting. So she would, she would choose her like five or 10 bridesmaids and the groom would show up at some random time and she would, they would have to be just ready to go to the wedding. 
So this is what he's talking about. He's talking about this moment when the groom shows up and the, brides, and the, the bridesmaids all have to be ready. He says, then the kingdom of heaven should be likened to ten virgins, or ten bridesmaids, who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now five were foolish and five were wise. Remnant. He just split the group in half. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. In other words, like there's the oil lamp, some of them had oil in it to light it, some did not. And he says this, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Oh, you know, it's not, he's not coming. I gotta sleep. Jesus isn't really coming back. I can smoke a little weed. It's not that big a deal. Let's just... It's not that big an issue. I'm just gonna, he's not really, it's not a thing. The bridegroom was delayed and they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard in the middle of the night when they're all not paying attention. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. And all the virgins arose, or all 10 of the bridesmaids arose and they trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, hey, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. And the wise were like, no. Lest there should not be enough for us, and, but you go and rather go to the, those who sell and, and buy some oil for yourself because we're going to go meet the groom right now. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. Boom. And the, the what? The, the, the door was shut. Do you know in the Old Testament story of Noah, geez, the scriptures say that God shut the door of the ark and that people pounded on the door to be let in. But God shut the door. There's a moment when he splits the sky and those that are ready, the door is shut and you go in. And if you're like, that's not really, it's not a, I can go with the, door shut and you get no other shot and you're either going to face that the moment he splits the sky which I think could happen in our lifetime I really do I just taught a whole series of teachings on revelation over the last three months talking about we are in we are in we are we are headed to the very last chapter of humanity Afterwards, the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open to us. They're banging on the door like they did for Noah and the ark. And he answered and said to them, surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day or the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. He's basically said, I am coming soon. I am coming quickly, and I will. I, d- I already know who's, on the, who's in the remnant and who's not. You get to choose. I mean, you can, you can go with the flow and get the applaud, applause of foolish people. You can. Billions with a B have done it for the past 8,000 years. And few have said, I'm going to stay with Christ. I'm going to trust that this way is better and higher and fuller and richer and full of hope and full of life and I, I, I don't care what you got you can do you, you do you but I, I gotta stay with Christ come on say remnant now I'm just gonna make three little application points to wrap this up and I want you to think now that I've kind of given you the idea and this is from the beginning to the Bible to the end of the Bible this is just the theme of scripture uh, I heard uh, a quote from Chuck Swindoll right before I preached the message uh, he's a famous preacher from like the last 30 years, he said, the whole of scripture is the story of one standing alone against the crowd. That's just the whole story of scripture. And you either go with the mob and miss him, or you say, nope, I'm I'm staying with Jesus. And you stay with the faithful few. Three thoughts of application. If right now you think about your life and you're like, man, I am, I am definitely not living with Christ. I'm living in the crowd. Then here's what I gotta tell you. you today, you gotta return to Christ right now. 
God's not mad at you. He's not upset with you. He's not frustrated. He's not, he's, he's just like, well, come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> I haven't come back yet. The ark door's still open. Let's go. He's like, just, just, return, just return to Christ. Just return to Christ. He's like, I have got to choose Jesus above all. I've got to say no to the world. To be a follower of Christ is no to the crowd. And yes to the cross. Honestly, what some of you, like, you just need to hear me say it. You just need to repent tonight. You need to say, God, I'm so sorry that I care more about the, the opinions of others or I let other people crush me into a mold rather than stand for you. I just, I, I just repent. I want to be where you are. I don't want this other stuff at all anymore. Some of you, you're in this room tonight because God orchestrated the event for you to be here tonight. You didn't even know you were gonna be in the room tonight. You didn't think you were even coming to church, but somehow you made it to church tonight to hear this talk because God's going, hello, door's gonna shut. You gotta get on the ark, the ark of the cross. You gotta let me rescue you. Just need to return before he returned. Secondarily, some of you, remember how I started with, you just feel alone in faith and like there's just, it feels like there's less and less believers. It's just, like it's just tough to do this Christian thing sometimes. I gotta tell you, you gotta stay faithful. God put you in the world for such a time as this. He decided he wanted you to live in this era when there would be less people believing when there would be less people in the majority wanting faith. He put you in this era for a reason. So don't you back off on faith now. God God put you in this moment for a reason. And no matter what your culture does, no matter what your friends do, no no matter what your spouse does, you stay faithful. Stay the course, you like, you keep looking at Jesus. You don't get sidetracked. You don't get frustrated. You don't live by lesser things. You keep faithfully, like you just keep looking at the cross. You keep worshiping the Savior. You keep opening up that book. That book is salvation and life. There is no salvation. There is no life apart from Christ. You stay faithful. You stay focused. You don't quit. People for thousands of years have faced worse situations than you and they stayed faithful. You don't quit. I know some of you get mocked. I know some of you get ostracized. I know you just feel weird. And you're not even trying to make a, de- a deal out of it. It's just, they just, they, they, they just come out like, you stay in it anyway. G- come on, say Jesus is worth it. Say again, say Jesus is worth it. He is worth every tear. He is worth every pain. He is worth every stress. He's he's worth every moment you get mocked. He's worth every stressful situation and every every day that you face walking with Christ. He is worth it. So you don't quit. You don't give up. Because you're the remnant. Guys, don't don't you get it? All throughout the Bible, there is a remnant. The Bible's talking about you. Those verses are literally you in America right now. And God wanted you to be a part of something so special. When the majority turned, he chose you. When the crowd yelled crucify, Jesus had 12. He's got you, which leads me to number three. You you gotta rescue as many as you can before Jesus comes back, man. If, if the, I, I believe we are, and I keep saying it, I believe we are in the last harvest of souls before the return of Christ. I believe the greatest harvest of souls saved is gonna take place in my lifetime. 
because the door's about to get closed. So I believe he's gonna rescue and rescue and rescue and rescue so many. And if God put you in this season of, of, of human history for this moment, that means he believes you have the power to change Elk River. You do, or he would not have put you in this season. Now we said earlier, all it would take it was a third. Now you gotta decide if you're gonna believe it. You have to decide if God left you on earth for such a time as this to breathe air right now because he believes you are the answer that Elk River needs. That's what all this lines up to is that you, you, you can be the solution to the brokenness and the pain and the hurt and the struggle and the stress if you will decide, I am the faithful few. You gotta rescue as many as you can. I got 20 years of life left, probably. 25 if I'm doing great. All I'm breathing air for is to try to rescue a few people before I go. Just trying to rescue a few people before I go. This is all I get. I'm trying to do my best. What if you became the faithful few? Not just come to church, not just hear a message, but recognize that God put you on earth for this season right now. Like we talk about on September 17th, 18th, we're like, we want you to, to bring a family to church that weekend to hear, have somebody receive Christ or hear the gospel. What if that is you? Like, what if you're like, okay, I'll do that. I, I, imagine just, God, remember, God doesn't need a crowd. He just needs you. He, just, he doesn't need a celebrity. He doesn't need a rich guy. He doesn't need a person with the most degrees. He just, he just needs your life. So what if September 17th, 18th, you're like, man, I'll, I'll put somebody in the seat to hear the gospel, to rescue some other life, to see, guys, we could, we could change the city. Come on, say faithful few. I invite you to close your eyes and bow your head for just a minute. I want you to think very clearly about what group you are in. Are you in the crowd or are you at the cross? Are you going with the flow? Or are you with the faithful few seeking the Savior? Being in church doesn't put you in one group or the other. Your life puts you in one group or the other. I, I, I recognize that maybe some people in here, you, you, you just probably need to repent and turn tonight and trust the Savior. And so I'm gonna lead us in a simple prayer. I'm just gonna invite everybody out loud to pray it because I want us to turn back to Christ. Just out loud say, Jesus Christ, today I turn to you. I reject the crowd. I reject the ways of culture. And I choose you alone, Jesus. You are my rescuer. You're my hope. You're my everything. I gladly stand for you. I reject the world and choose the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.